Hey guys, welcome back to the next lecture. We're going to start this one with some true or false questions to test your knowledge of the high yield disorders involving amino acids and their derivatives. So as always with true false questions, I'm going to stick with you and uh, sort of um, go through this in a in rapid, rapid fire style. So I'll let you read the question, then we'll discuss the correct or incorrect answer in, in, in a little bit of detail about what you need to know. So let's get started with the first question. I'll let you read it and give you a few seconds on the clock. True or false, go. This is false. Now remember, in PKU, tyrosine becomes the essential amino acid because it won't be synthesized if that enzyme is missing, which is of course phenylalanine hydroxylase. Now the cofactor involved in the reaction, which is BH4, could also be a cause if it is missing. This is why management includes decreasing phenylalanine intake increasing tyrosine intake, and supplementing with BH4. Now, don't forget that PKU is inherited how? It is autosomal recessive, and that it's important to look for this two to three days after the birth of the child. Next question, true or false, go. This is false. That musty odor results from the fact that aromatic amino acid metabolism is disrupted, not branch chain amino acids. Also, don't forget that certain phenyl ketones accumulate in this condition, and it's important that you remember their names. So, what are they? We have phenyl acetate, phenyl lactate, and phenyl pyruvate. All right, make sure you know that. Next question, true or false, go. What do you guys think, is this true or false? This is true. Maternal PKU is caused by elevated levels of phenylalanine in the mom. So we can actually manage this by ensuring that we keep phenylalanine levels low. Now the recommendation is currently to keep them under six milligrams per deciliter for at least three months before becoming pregnant. And then during the pregnancy, maintaining levels no more than two to six milligrams per deciliter. All right, next question. True or false, go. This is false. So in maple syrup urine disease, we get a blocked degradation of branching amino acids due to a decrease in the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, there's going to be an elevation overall of alpha keto acids in the blood, but of the three branch chain amino acids, which are of course leucine, isoleucine, and valine, leucine will be the most elevated of the bunch. All right, let's move on to the next question. True or false? This is false. So maple syrup urine disease management includes restriction of the branch chain amino acids as well as supplementation with thiamine. Next question, true or false, go. What do you guys think? This is of course false. Now remember, those physical findings that we see in alcaptonuria typically happen a little bit later in life. So you're not going to see this sort of problem shortly after birth. Now the reason why arthralgias develop is because Homogentic acid, uh, which accumulates because it can't be broken down, is toxic to cartilage. Don't forget, this is also inherited in an AR fashion. And the reason why it happens is because of an enzyme deficiency. And that enzyme is homogentic acid oxidase. That prevents the production of maliloacetoacetic acid and subsequently fumarate, which is needed for the TCA. Now, one of the classic descriptions that are identified early on in this condition and um, this is probably something you'll see is the darkening of the urine upon exposure to air. And typically you might they might tell you that um, there's dark a dark fluid in the diaper or something like that. Um, and that should tip you off to you know, this condition, I'll captain area. All right, next question. True or false? Go. All right, guys, this is false. So homocystinuria, which can be due to either a cystothionine synthase, methionine synthase, or methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase deficiency is inherited in an AR manner. Don't forget that this can also result from a decreased affinity of cystothionine synthase for pyridoxal phosphate. Now, you want to make sure you remember the findings associated with this condition, which we can use the mnemonic homocysteine, H-O-M-O-C-Y, part of the word is the mnemonic. So this stands for increased homocysteine, so H is homocysteine is increased in the urine, osteoporosis, marfanoid habitus, ocular changes, 
um, which this occurs, of course, to that down and in subluxation, subluxation of the lens. The C is for cardiovascular findings. Um, we also have kyphosis, as well as uh, in the word kyphosis, the Y is your Y in your mnemonic. And you also have intellectual disability and skin hypopigmentation. Those are not part of the mnemonic, but you want to make sure you remember that. Um, so homocysteine, homo CY, is the mnemonic part of that word homocysteine. All right, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. It's in your book, your book, so either way, hopefully you can figure that out. All right, let's move on to the next one. True or false, go. This is false. Remember, we're going to treat this by decreasing methionine, increasing cysteine, as well as increasing B6, B12, and folate. Next question, true or false, go. This is true. A significant increase in B6 intake, as well as an increased dietary intake of cysteine, can help you to manage this cause. Next question, true or false, go. This is true. Folic acid intake is helpful in managing this cause of homocystinuria. Next question, true or false, go. What do you guys think? This is false. Remember that mnemonic, COLA, and remember that it stands for cysteine, ornithine, lysine, and arginine, not alanine. Next question, true or false? What do you guys think? This is false. This is sort of tricky if you sort of glanced over it. This glanced over it. The stones are hexagonal shape. They're not octagonal. Pay attention. Don't, if you made that mistake, pay attention to exactly what they're telling you. Don't just gloss over it. Next question, true or false? Go. Hey guys, what do you think? You're not going to be tested on this, but a lot of students don't know this. This is false. So the bond that holds together two cysteines is a disulfide bond. It is not a hydrogen bond. Also, that is the difference between cysteine spelled T-I-N-E and cysteine spelled T-E-I-N-E. A lot of students have no clue about that, so keep that in mind. Next question, true or false? This is false. Propionic acidemia is a condition that's caused by a deficiency of the propionyl CoA carboxylase enzyme. And as a result, we are going to see a rise in propionyl CoA, but a drop in methylmalonic acid. All right, we have one more true false question. So, true or false, go. This is true. So, this condition can result from either a methylmalonyl CoA mutase deficiency or a vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, don't forget that. Whether we're looking at this or, propi or propionic acidemia, these organic acidemias are going to likely be seen in infancy and present with poor feeding, vomiting, hypotonia, hepatomegaly, seizures, as well as an increased anion gap metabolic acidosis. So when these organic acids accumulate, it's going to disrupt both gluconeogenesis, that results in a drop in fasting blood glucose levels, and the urea cycle, that results in an elevation in ammonia. We don't want that. All right, let's move on to the next question. We got some multiple choices coming our way. So go ahead and hit that pause button, figure this one out, and then come on back when you think you have the right answer. The correct answer here is A. So when it comes to glycogen regulation, the hormones are going to determine whether we undergo glycogen synthesis or glycogen breakdown. So hormones like glucagon and epinephrine, these are going to increase cyclic AMP. We talked about this earlier, that increases PKA, that stimulates that glycogen phosphorylase kinase, which then activates the, gly the glycogen phosphorylase enzyme that breaks down glycogen into glucose. Insulin, on the other hand, activates glycogen synthase and protein phosphatase, thus making glycogen, right? Insulin is a storage hormone. It's going to want to store glucose as glycogen. Now remember that glycogen branches are composed of alpha-1-6 bonds and glycogen linkages have alpha-1-4 bonds. Now, in the muscles, glycogen will undergo glycogenolysis to release glucose 1-phosphate. That is converted into glucose 6-phosphate. That is then used for energy. In the liver, stored glycogen is released via glycogenolysis to maintain appropriate blood glucose levels. Now, when glucose is needed, 
glycogen phosphorylase will release a glucose 1-phosphate residue off of branch glycogen until we get to right around four remaining glucose units on that branch. At this point, the 4-alpha-D-glucotransferase, also known as the debranching enzyme, will move those remaining units from the branch to the linkage, at which point alpha-1,6-glucosidase cleaves off that one remaining residue, thus releasing a glucose. Now, let's do a matching exercise next and then discuss the, patholo the pathologies that we might see with respect to glycogen regulation. So here is the uh, matching exercise. Here are your conditions and the deficient enzymes. So let's go ahead and figure this one out and then come on back when you think you have everything correct and we will discuss. All right, here are your correct answers. If you have to fix anything, please hit the pause button. Go ahead and do so. Otherwise, let's take a look at some of the highlights that we need to know about the glycogen storage diseases. First, let's start with von Gerk. Now, von Gerk disease, which is caused by deficiency of the glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme, is going to result in severe fasting hypoglycemia, as well as a significant increase in liver and kidney glycogen. The reason why is because the, the liver cannot regulate blood glucose by releasing that glycogen, so it accumulates. Pompe's disease is caused by deficiency of the lysosomal acid alpha-1,4-glucosidase. This results in exercise intolerance, hypotonia, cardiomyopathy, and even early death. Cori disease is caused by deficiency of the debranching enzymes, specifically the alpha-1,6-glucosidase and 4-alpha-D-glucotransferase. Now, this looks a lot like von Gerke disease, but the symptoms tend to be milder, and there's not going to be elevations in blood lactate levels. So that's sort of a way you can try and figure this out if they give it to you. Then we have Anderson disease. Anderson disease is caused by deficiency of the branching enzyme. So Cori is debranching, Anderson is branching. You can just remember AB, Anderson branching. This results in hepatosplenomegaly as well as a failure to thrive early on in infancy and will result in early childhood death. Uh, McCardle disease is our last one here, and this is caused by deficiency of the skeletal muscle glycogen phosphorylase. And in this condition, we're going to see an increased amount of glycogen in the muscle, but the muscles at the same time can't break it down. And that results in cramping as well as myoglobinuria whenever patients undergo uh, intense strenuous exercise. You also see um, the tendency to develop uh, electrolyte abnormalities in this, which means patients are at an increased risk with McCardle's of uh, developing arrhythmias. Okay. Let's move on to the next matching exercise. So match the disease with its correct enzyme deficiency. These are um, your lysosomal storage diseases. So go ahead and figure everything out and then come on back when you think you have the correct answers. All right, here are your correct answers. If you have to fix anything, go ahead and hit the pause button and do so. Otherwise, let's take a look at our lysosomal storage diseases, uh, covering the deficient enzymes, as well as the main findings that will tip us off to whatever condition they're trying to get us to think about. So let's start at the top here with Tay-Sachs disease. This is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner, and this is caused by deficiency of the hexosaminidase A enzyme. That leads to an accumulation of the GM2 ganglioside substrate. Now, this is going to lead to progressive neurodegeneration, hyperreflexia, hyperacusis, uh, developmental delays, as well as that classic cherry red spot on the macula, as well as lysosomes with what is described as onion skin. Now, one thing that I want you to keep in mind when you see these findings in a vignette and you're down to this or Neiman pick is to remember that this condition is not characterized by hepatosplenomegaly. Neiman pick is. It's these small details that will allow you to not get stuck on two final answers. Next up, we have Fabry disease. This is inherited in an X-linked recessive manner, and this is caused by deficiency of the alpha-galactosidase A enzyme. As a result of this deficiency, we see a buildup of ceramide trihexoside. Now, in this condition, we want to be on the lookout for both early and late findings. Those early findings include a triad of findings that include episodic peripheral neuropathy, angiokeratomas, and hypohydrosis. Those late findings include progressive renal failure and cardiovascular disease. 
Now, metachromatic leukodystrophy, this is up next. This is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner as well. And the enzyme deficient here is aryl sulfatase A. As a result, we see an accumulation of cerebrocyte sulfate. Now, this condition can be identified in a vignette when the patient has ataxia and dementia, um, which are caused by central and peripheral demyelination. Crab disease is up next, and this is also inherited in an AR manner, and the deficiency here is the galactocerebrosidase enzyme. As a result of that deficiency, we see an accumulation of two things, cycosine and galactocerebroside. Now, this condition leads to the destruction of oligodendrocytes. It causes peripheral neuropathy, optic atrophy, developmental delays, as well as the presence of globoid cells. Globoid cells are sort of these large cells that may have more than one nucleus. Gaucher disease is next. This is actually your most common lysosomal storage disease, and this is caused by a deficiency of the glucocerebrosidase enzyme. As a result of that enzyme deficiency, we are going to accumulate glucocerebroside substrate. Now, like many of these conditions, this is also inherited in an AR manner. This is characterized by the development of hepatosplenomegaly, uh, pancytopenia, osteoporosis, avascular necrosis of the femur, and of course, the presence of those classic Gaucher cells. And I've seen this question a lot. They describe them as, what they are as lipid-laid macrophages, but they're described as looking like crumpled tissue paper. So if you see that in a vignette, I want you to think Gaucher. Then we have Neiman Pick. Uh, this is another AR inherited disorder, and the deficiency here is the sphingomyelinase enzyme. As a result of that enzyme deficiency, we see an accumulation of sphingomyelin. Now, this condition is characterized by things like progressive neurodegeneration, hepatosplenomegaly, lipid-laid macrophages. Those are, of course, known as bone cells. As well, this, similar to Tay-Sachs, is associated with that cherry red spot on the macula. So if you see cherry red spot, think of these two. And finally, we have two mucopolysaccharidoses. We have Hurler and Hunter syndrome. So Hurler syndrome is caused by deficiency of the alpha l iduronidase enzyme. As a result of this, we see a buildup of both heparin and dermatan sulfate. And this is characterized by developmental delays, skeletal abnormalities, uh, corneal clouding, hepatosplenomegaly, as well as airway obstruction. This too is inherited in an AR manner. Final one here is Hunter syndrome. Now, this one, uh, the inheritance pattern is one of the exceptions because so far, almost everything has been inherited in an AR manner. This is inherited in an X-linked recessive manner. Now, do you remember which of the other lysosomal storage diseases we've been talking about is also inherited in an X-linked recessive manner? That would be Fabry disease. Don't forget that. Now, when it comes to the symptoms of Hurler syndrome, or sorry, Hunter syndrome, what I want you to remember is that it looks a lot like Hurler syndrome, but it's a bit milder. It's not associated with corneal clouding, but it is characterized by aggressive behavior. All right, those are high, high, high yield, as are your glycogen storage diseases. Make sure you know that stuff, all right? Let's take a break, and we will do the final lecture in biochemistry.